Okay. Uh, so hi everybody. Um, thanks a lot for the introduction. Um, hope everybody is um, is having a great time in uh, Wyoming. I would really have liked very much to be um, uh, to be here. Um, so thanks for waking up um, early, and I'll try to do my best at that time of um, of the night. And so that's going to be. Um, a series of um, yeah so yeah maybe one more thing or so um it's always it's not always very easy over zoom but um yeah please um so if you have any question please try to um, to interrupt me as much as possible or i also try to react over chat but perhaps some live questions are are better <clears throat> so um what i would like to to speak about in this series of lectures is about um uh, so the title which I which I use actually is is operator norm norm. So let me just try to write a bit better norm uh, convergence uh, for random matrices uh, in a free probability theory, <clears throat> and actually. Um, so, what I would um, say, like to say, is that well, random matrices are not absolutely necessary in, in what or, or what I'm going to to do. Like many things which I'm going to say, actually, um, require randomness because we don't know how to do uh, differently. But, but the main problem that we have in mind does not necessarily have um, uh, randomness. Uh, um inside this is this is somehow um something which um which we need for technical reasons for the for, for the book so of course another point of view could be we try to understand random matrices and in this case of course we're happy to have randomness but the the notion of operator and convergence is actually just a, a notion of you know operator algebra or or linear algebra or something like this so um actually let me so just start with some uh, definitions. So just one, de one definition, which is very old and, uh, and very classical, um, which perhaps is due to Voiculescu or even earlier. So this is convergence in a non-commutative distribution. Um, so here, yeah, maybe I, I think it's a uh, small separate here to quote uh, Voiculescu for this definition. And so what we are doing here is we are having a, some a sequence of non-commutative probability spaces, um, which I will call like this A n comma tau n. So what I'm going to assume here is that for now, that what we have here is a unital star algebra. And that this is, well, it does not really matter, but I will assume to have a, a trace here. And so that's my sequence. Let's say a sequence which is indexed by, for example, n bigger than one. Um, and I have in the limit <coughs> something which which I need to describe a limit, which is also a non commutative probability space, which is, which will also be a treasure. I mean, which, yeah, which I could require to be treasure. And um, what I do is I pick um, there a, a tuple of, um, of, um, of elements, uh, let's say K elements, X, one, N. So each time I take uh, a K tuple of elements, which belong to this, to this to this algebra here, um, and I do again the same uh, here with x1, xk, and um, then what the definition is that this um, sequence of k tuples here converge to this k tuple, so in maybe in non-commutative uh, um, distribution. Um, if uh, for any for any uh, word 
um, w in uh, x1 xk uh, formally so i could either take a word or a star word which would uh, allow the, the conjugates um, as well um, depending on the on the circumstances i have that wn which is the this word here evaluated in this uh, in these quantities there um, so so this is now an element of, of a n i look at the trace uh, of this guy this converges uh, to the trace of the word as n goes to infinity so um uh, so this is um, and this notion has been uh, extremely uh, important in free probability, of course, because um, many people, starting with Voiculescu, uh, proved that if I take independent um, random variables, uh, then um, they they converge towards uh, towards free um, variables. So maybe I should try uh, right away to to enumerate some examples. So maybe let me give a big list of examples and with, with, the, with the aim somehow to, that's my definition here. And my aim is to, is to try to see when the examples can be upgraded to, to a stronger convergence somehow, which, um, which we have taken the bad habits of calling uh, uh, a strong convergence, although it's not a strong convergence in um, from the operator algebraic uh, point of view. So maybe we should say operator non convergence but maybe uh, my my tongue will slip quite uh, um, uh, quite often. So some examples, some examples um, in maybe some kind of um, random, well, semi-random order like. Partly chronological order. So if I take IID, IID, uh, G U is so G U is our Gaussian uh, unitary uh, ensembles. So this is so this is uh, matrices X one N X K N, which are all distributed. So which have which are all IID and their distribution is X I N has the law of um, uh, exponential what uh, minus n over two trace of a square d a where this is um, so the law this uh, where this is the non normalized trace here. And this is a multiple of the Lebesgue measure. This is one. This is this is one R measure, if you want. Okay, so there is a constant to, to make this to make this to one. <clears throat> uh, and then, what uh, what Voiculescu proved? What Voiculescu proved, as I said orally, is that uh, x one almost surely, as n goes to infinity x1 and xkn converges um, to uh, S, s1 sk which are free a semicircle and this reason i assume that i don't have to to define to define this um, if needs be um, let me know though um, <clears throat> so Another example which was uh, given by, by Voiculescu is if I take um, now, so this is maybe this is the first example here, okay. So the second example would be, um, the second example would be uh, IID har unitaries. So in the random matrix sense, of it, so this is U one N U K N, 
which are IID and the distribution of UIN follows the higher measure on the unitary group um, UN. And then Volkul School again proved that a U1N UKN converges in uh, star distribution almost surely towards uh, U1 UK, which are a free, uh, which are the free generators. Generators of the free group <coughs> factor on the K elements, which are K generators. So the free group factor on K elements. <coughs> okay. Um, so these actually examples have lots of randomness, um, uh, but there are some examples which have less uh, randomness. I think that uh, it was initially proved like almost in the same time as for if I'm not mistaken, um, uh, that random permutations. Now, if I take uh, IID random permutations, this is very cool school again. Is cool. So IID random uh, permutations. So S1 and SK and and so here this time SIN is distributed according to the uniform measure, which of course I could call the hard measure on the symmetric group. Here I'm viewing the symmetric group. Maybe I should put some some nice S like this as a, a subgroup of the unitary group. Um, this is just unitary matrices with entries which are either a zero or or one. So I think that this is Andunika who, is, who proved this initially. Um, um, so you could say there is this is still random, but there is less randomness than than here somehow. Oh yeah, this converges. Sorry, I should finish my statement that this converges towards the same U1 UK as as here. So what we have here remains here. So maybe I should try to to highlight it a bit to make make the things a little bit less uh, look a bit less terrible. Okay, so this is just like this. Um, <clears throat> so um, um, right. So maybe one one more um, example could be which I find uh, two, two more examples which I find actually. Let's say actually three, three examples which I which I find uh, um, interesting. So let me add them. There is um, a result by by Bian. Um, so what Bian did is he took something which which is called the truncated Uchis um, Murphy element, Uchis Murphy elements. So here is how they look like. He, uh, this is something like this. This is, we take the group algebra of the symmetric group. So I should try to stick to some um, uh, consistent notation. Maybe I will say, um, I will take it, let's say in S, uh, K n plus one. So it's, it's just permitting K n plus one elements. So it's uh, permitting elements between zero and kn and here i am i'm taking i'm taking here the first element which is um so x1 x1 and this is going to be the the, the sum of the 0 1 plus 0 2 plus 0 um, n and then x2 n is going to be 0 n plus 1 plus 0 uh, 2 n. Each time I should normalize them by uh, 1 over root n, I think, and so on and so forth. 
And what he proved also is that these elements, so I have I have K of them. If I not mess up my notation, this this converge towards I I D. Sorry, towards free semicircle. So free semicircle. So here I think that this is interesting in the sense that this is non-random. This is non-random. So we are somehow decreasing the level of, um, of randomness. Um, another example, which is non-random, which is which I think has been um, kind of underexploited in so it's not been so much exploited in, in free probability theory, which is if you take uh, you know, if you take um, 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 a, a group of uh, G, and uh, um, you take um, maybe that that you assume to be to be residually finite. So so which means that you have a couple of uh, you have a sequence of um, surjections uh, of group morphisms onto onto finite morphisms, which you know which separates uh, the points of G, so which means that if you prefer the the, the intersection of the uh, of the kernels, it's just uh, it's just the, the, the zero group, and then what you have is if I if I pick a, the k elements here, x1, xk. Um, then, so what I would like to do is I would like to, to, to think of them as belonging to the group algebra of, uh, of G. <coughs> then, um, then if I look at the, at the image under this, this, uh, this group morphism, so this is, I could call them X1 and as usual, uh, X, K, N. And what I have is that this now belongs to C of the image. And I have again, I have again that um, I will have again the convergence in non committed distribution of these elements towards those elements. So that's actually, a, also if I take the free group here, we know that the free group is residually finite. It's very simple to, to, to show this, maybe you could just embed the free group in uh, SL2 of, uh, of Z, for example, and then you could quotient modulo P, something like this, um, to obtain a finite group. <clears throat> and then you obtain also, um, with very little effort, uh, examples of, um, of unitaries in a finite dimensional sister algebra who, who, who converge in non commutative distribution to, to free uh, elements. So that's also non random. And uh, sorry for the multiple examples. So again, I, this maybe I'm going to, I will try to, to refer to this list uh, subsequently. Hello, yes. Can you hear me, Benoit? Yes, yes. yes. Thank you. Um, uh, this is Ken. I just have yes, a question. Hi. These, these groups, do you have to make some further assumption? Like if you repeat one representation again and again, you have to assume the, the kernels are getting smaller or something like that? Or... That's, that's uh, what science is doing. Oh, you could repeat one again and again, even if they all the group separate. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so maybe okay. So, the, so, so there is an assumption which could be increasing. Uh, kernels okay. decreasing, something like that. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, decreasing kernels. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and one more uh, point: all the other examples yeah. that almost the random examples are all almost sure convergence. Yes, uh, actually. Um, so, um, so example one and two, this is almost sure, yes. Uh, example one and two, this is uh, almost sure. So yeah, here I should put uh, almost sure as well. Uh, here, this is actually not almost sure. 
um, this is uh, in probability. So uh, in uh, probability. So the the likelihood that uh, that this that this works is uh, is high. Oh, I see there is chat. Oh, can I give a more precise reference? For example, for um, uh, yes. Yeah, so the the reference I think it's uh, a paper by Bian. I think it's Bian. Well, I mean, he was publishing lots of papers in this uh, at that time, but I think it's. Uh, it's a paper that was published around uh, 95, I think, uh, where he where he explicitly uh, computed uh, um, uh, this this example. So, uh, any other questions? Okay. So yeah, one so one last example which I want to mention actually. Um, um, so the last example which I want to mention is. Um, if I take, so I'm not going to define it, though, uh, because that would uh, uh, be slightly uh, take uh, too much time. But if I take, if I consider the free orthogonal quantum group, so we just put the name, free orthogonal uh, quantum group. So this is a star algebra. Well, actually, yeah. So this is the star algebra that I paid by, by n square. Um, self adjoint element u i j uh, equals so this is generated by u i by elements which are uh, self adjoint and we satisfy the property that if i create them so this is for i j in the set one to one so it's n square elements and the, the property is that um, if i create a big matrix u uh, so a matrix in MN tends this star algebra, then this matrix should be unitary. And it's um, entry. Uh, and and it's, uh, it's transposed as well. Um, no, that's correct. That's, that, 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 yeah, that's what I want. Yeah, sorry. So that's just what I want. I'm confusing myself. Um, and um, so, what was proved? So, so there exists. So here is here. I will be a little bit. Um, I will just skip one one uh, one uh, step. So this is a compact. This is a compact, a quantum group, and it admits. Uh, uh, as such, it admits a, a unique um, hard treasure state, which I could call tau n. And then it was observed that if I look <coughs> at this, um, if I scale, if I scale like this, square root of n times u, I should put some n's here because I want to have a sequence squared u i j uh, n this converge uh, towards this converge towards uh, free uh, free semi circles which uh, circular elements which i could also denote with a double index s i j so if i want to make something completely rigorous probably i should i should fix i should fix some k and I should take all my elements between one and k, and then send the whole thing to infinity. So these are the, the six examples which I would like to um, to look at. So we have we have um, uh, this convergence in uh, in distribution. Uh, this one is a little bit different from the others because all the others. Um, the, the elements of the sequence, they are in finite dimensional algebras, whereas here is different. Like here it's, a, it's already a, a hard, like, like it, it's already a, a tough algebra somehow. So it's a, it's a little bit different, but, but the context of convergence remains the same though. Um, so there is no obligation to, um, to, to stick to finite dimensional algebras, uh, of course, 
this is good sometimes we like when we want to do some approximation properties uh, or so or if we want to do random matrices but doesn't have to be to be the case in the definition so uh, now um, uh, let's try let's upgrade a little bit the the, the definition of, of convergence and um, now if uh, if uh, uh, a uh, a n um, is endowed definition uh, uh, if a n is endowed <laughs> with um, or a sister norm uh, for which um, uh, tau n is faithful so i will always here I, I will not i will always put it like this is faithful um, then we say that uh, we have um, an operator norm convergence. Uh, we have we have an operator norm convergence uh, to towards uh, towards um, a now which is also which is also here endowed with a norm for which we have faithful. So for which you know, maybe I should say resp tau is faithful. Um, we have we have operator norm convergence um, uh, if if for every a polynomial p, every every non-positive polynomial p, um, if I evaluate uh, the non complete polynomial P in uh, in the X N mm. of X I N, so it is as before, right? Here I have here I have uh, X X one N X K N, which belong here, and here I have X one X K, which belong there, and the operator norm converges. So if I should have said, I should also have said if maybe uh, if in addition to um, non-commutative uh, convergence. So this is I this is my prerequisite. What all what I said above uh, is my prerequisite. And on top of this, I require that whenever I take so not not a word this time, but a linear combination of words. So not a polynomial. And if I look at at its norm, then it converges as n goes to infinity to uh, the norm of p of x i. Um, so this is the the operator norm um, convergence. Maybe I can just make a quick um, a quick remark, and then I would like to. Um, to explain, to go back to the example and explain what is known, what is not known, and what are the challenges, um, and uh, and then start, and then like the end of this lecture and probably the next lecture will be uh, devoted to to describing some techniques uh, to prove uh, um, uh, operator non convergence, which which I might uh, call strong convergence, and now and then. So uh, one remark first, one remark is that um, the the non the the non commutative uh, the, the non commutative convergence in distribution in distribution plus uh, the faithfulness which we which we have here plus faithfulness. Uh, imply already some relation between this sequence of norm and that one. Namely, it implies that if I look at the limit inf as n goes to infinity of p of x i n, uh, this is at least the operator norm of p of x i. So this is yeah, that's a simple exercise. 
just follows from the fact that the the LP norm, the, the LPG norm is the limit of the of the LP norm. So then if you just check what it means, you you obtain this uh, this inequality. So somehow somehow the this operator non perverse or this strong perverse says that uh, mm, you know uh, the converse inequality is true somehow like like the limit soup is less than than that somehow <clears throat> so maybe also one one more comment that this this notion uh, probably has started to become very important in operator algebra and free property um, with the words of Hargrove and Torbjörnsen, which I'm going to um, to describe a little bit, or to at least to quote uh, extensively. Um, but that's also quite important in um, um, in in statistics, or also in uh, in uh, in quantum information, or in, in many other places, because um, somehow the difference between the the non-commutative, the convergence in, in non-commutative distribution, maybe here, so the, the convergence, maybe we rewrite this, the convergence, uh, the convergence um, in non-commutative distribution. Um, so the convergence in non-commutative distribution says that whenever I take a polynomial, then if I look globally at, at uh, you know, at let's say a self adjoint polynomial, and if I look at the, the histogram of its eigenvalues, um, then it will converge, uh, you know, globally as a shape to to the to the limit. And what the operator norm says is that, so somehow the convergence in non with distribution tells something like if I look outside of the support. Of the spectrum of the of the limiting operator, um, the number of eigenvalues which are which are far away is little o of the dimension. And so maybe I, should, I could just write a, a, a catchphrase. So here, um, yeah, what what should I do? Somehow, maybe I could say something like, um, let's see, I will change my color and. So conversion of distribution says something like um, the number of you know uh, misbehaving misbehaving uh, eigenvalues is a little o of the dimension um, in the case of matrices, and this property here says that the number of misbehaving mis be behave behaving behaving eigenvalues is not O of dimension, but it's little O of one actually. So there are no misbehaving eigenvalues. If I fix an epsilon, then there are no eigenvalues for n large enough who are epsilon away from the from the spectrum. So this is this is much stronger. And this statement actually um, at first sight looks slightly stronger. Than this, because in principle, I'm just here making a statement about the operator norm. And for example, you could imagine some patterns where you have a disconnected spectrum and then what happens in the middle. But here, the important point is that I have a quantifier over all the polynomials. So actually, being able to tell something about the norm of all polynomials is equal to being able to say something about. Um, the behavior of all eigenvalues of all polynomials. Um, yeah, so that's uh, 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 that's the idea, uh, basically. <clears throat> right. So uh, let's get back to the examples, and uh, let's try to see uh, what what is known. So here we have convergence, and which we actually we actually have. Uh, the the operator norm convergence. So this was achieved by by Hagerup and Torbjörnsen. Group and Tor Bjornsen in 2005. So this was uh, I think 1992, something like this. 
So you know, um, it took more than a decade to to upgrade from from this to uh, to that. So, um, this here was proved for the first time by uh, by myself and Camille Mal in 2012, I think. Um, so so which means which means that we have operator on convergence here. Um, okay, so here this is known. Um, here this is known. Here, and uh, this is false. We don't have operator on uh, convergence. However, we almost have it. Like we don't have it for an elementary reason. Namely, um, all these people here share a same eigenvector. They share the, the perron frobenius eigenvector, which is the 111 uh, vector. So what we have is that if we look on the orthogonal width, so on the orthogonal of the perron frobenius eigenvector, so I'm not looking now at an n by like a n by n matrix, but n minus one times n minus one matrix. Uh, we have also we have operator norm. This is a convergence, and so this is a result which was so yeah actually so here this was this was almost sure. This was almost sure, and here this is operator norm convergence with high probability. And this is something which was proved by uh, Bordenov and myself and Collins um, in 20, you know, uh, 18 or 19, so around there. Um, <clears throat> um, so again, like this work by Andu. Uh, and I, mean, I mean, this has taken quite some time to, to go from here to, to there as well. So here, actually, uh, we can prove, I mean, this is not written, but it's, um, it follows from not too difficult um, uh, operator, uh, not, not, not too difficult um, considerations on the, on the symmetric group, that actually we, we do not know uh, operator <coughs> uh, convergence. So, so, so this is a, this doesn't work here. And uh, basically, the roughly the idea is that you know you have this. Uh, the idea behind Bian is that if if you take the if you take the Russian notation for for the irreducible representation of the symmetric group, those who those whose major contribution, uh, those who, yeah those whose principal contribution. Who have a principal contribution with respect to the Plancher and measure have a given shape as n as n becomes big, um, and we have this you know like they are well balanced. So so if I have k if I have k boxes or k n boxes, then the the, the width uh, is typically a square root of the number of boxes, but we cannot neglect those which are very long and which will actually uh, give some which will give some some large operator norm here. So this is actually uh, not working in, uh, here, and there is you know there is no simple trick. Uh, I, I don't know of any simple trick to to get rid of this problem here. So this is some some kind of unavoidable phenomenon. Like we have we have some nice representation theory going on, but somehow the price to pay is that um, the the operator norm behavior is. Um, we don't know how it is. Uh, so here, also we don't have, we we don't have, um, we have no uh, operator norm uh, convergence. Uh, and again, this is for for a similar reason. This is again the Perron Frobenius arguments, uh, Perron uh, Frobenius uh, arguments. So if you, on the finite group, you always have um, an invariant vector, which is not just one over every every value and this will um, it will result in, a, in some bad behavior of norms so however however here i would like to to stress 
the fact that um, uh, what happens, what happens on what I could call C of G N bubble. So if I if I take the if I if I remove the trivial representation, uh, what happens there? And I, I actually think it's quite an interesting uh, and important um, open question. Uh, one could argue that uh, there is some ground for believing that that some partial results could be obtained, because, for example, if you look at a very particular case of polynomial, so just one, but still, you know, uh, like an important and a hard one, which is the sum of the generators, uh, then there are some cases. Uh, um, so, so this 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 has a relation to to to, so to, to some graph theory, to, to some problem which is of finding some uh, uh, some maximally uh, mixing graphs, and in particular, so, so something which is called the Ramanujan graphs, Ramanujan graphs. So there is a very uh, famous um, uh, paper by uh, Lubotsky, uh, Philips, Sarnak. Um, where somehow they they show one very one extreme one particular case um, of this they, they just prove somehow that for one given polynomial what what I would like to be true uh, is true. So of course, I'm I'm asking I'm, I'm I'm asking if this is true for any p and and you know that that's that, that's completely open. Um, but you see, so what we have done so far is we have we have reviewed the five examples where I am approximating the three elements, you know, or three group elements by finite dimensional matrices. And, and the point is that, so what, what we learned so far, because the last one is already infinite dimensional, um, is that there is, there is no uh, non-random random example. So all the examples, they are one, two, and three, the, the example one and two of, of operator non convergence they are very random in a sense, like this Gaussian or or hard measure, which is not as random as, as as you can get somehow. The third one is much less random, but still it has some randomness. And the examples which which do not have randomness um, uh, in finite dimension, they 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 don't work, or we don't know if they work. Or if they work, they were just in a particular case, and with extremely um, tough proofs. So, so this is, um, um, and I think this, yeah, this is this would be really nice to have some examples of um, of operator on convergence, uh, um, which which are explicit somehow, um, right? And finally, so let me let me get back to back to back on track with uh, with six. So six uh, strong convergence was proved actually by Mike Brennan. So operator norm uh, convergence was achieved by Mike Brennan. And actually, this is a, his argument is very beautiful. So um, it's very beautiful, and it's not used as well. Um, so I maybe what I let's see. Um, I have what I have actually five minutes left. Maybe what I could do is I could uh, spend the last five minutes um, of um, of today uh, to explain a little bit how how Mike's idea uh, works. Actually, we have never been able to to make his idea work for random matrices or for fight uh, dimensional algebra. But I have some kind of hope that uh, that something could be done. So so here is so. Um, so you know, uh, Mike Braden uh, approach uh, to uh, operate on them convergence before um, uh, for O N plus. Yeah, actually, <laughs> uh, well, I didn't say. Uh, hmm. Maybe I should have. Yeah, maybe I should have written here. What well, doesn't matter, but that this that this this thing here was done by uh, by Banika and uh, and myself actually by Theo Banika and uh, and myself. In case you you want to reference, 
but of course, like now we have Mike's results, which are uh, which are way stronger. I could also add that uh, I was already uh, bothered by the by I, I already wanted to answer the, the norm behavior of of that operator, and and together actually with uh, with Paul Zinjustin as well, with Paul Zinjustin. We, with very tough calculations, we managed to obtain the norm points for just one element for k equals one. Uh, so, you know, Mike Brannan he, he just completely generated this, which was very, very, very exciting um, development. So, so his idea basically is to use. Um, so, what I would like to do from now on, anyway, is to is to describe some some techniques. So, so let's start with with the one of um, of Mike. Uh, so the the, the 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 key idea is to use a high group inequality, use a high group inequality. So I will be a little bit sketchy, um, maybe um, because I should try to uh, to finish in time. <clears throat> but the idea is that if I take um, so the, the following things hold true on 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 O n plus as well. If I take um, um, a non commutative polynomial of um, of the of of a given degree, so so I will I will take a sum over over some words whose uh, whose degree is less than than L. So the words is, is like like u one one u one two and whatever, um, and and then I have some coefficients, and then I have my word. But my word, I look at it in in O n, in O n plus. So somehow I can make sense of all this, irrespective of, uh, of where I'm looking. Actually, and yeah, maybe here I should uh, probably I should rescale as well for this to be from for what I say to be to be correct. Um, and if you look at the operator norm of this. Then what you have is that you can bound it by some two norm. So you can bound it by some two norm of, uh, so here again, maybe to try to go straight to the point, I will write the same thing with alpha w, the d double degree of the word uh, less than L of w with a two norm. So in, in general, you would expect the all things to be true. And here what you have is you have some dependence in in the degree, so you have something like this. You have p, some polynomial in in um, in L. I think this is I, th I think it's just linear or maybe linear or quadratic. I forgot. Um, but anyway, this is a polynomial. This is a polynomial. Um, and and then if you have this, um, well, what you could do, for example, is you could you could assume. But this to be to be a self-adjoint, and, and then you could uh, you could look. So let me now try to to use some tricks, uh, some uh, some iPad tricks. Hope this will work. So I'm just going to copy this here and paste it. Very nice. And now what what we do is um, um, so we're going to take this to the power, let's say, to, to some, um, okay, whatever, to some even, to some uh, uh, even power. Um, and so now this is, of course, if I take a, a, a 2k power, this becomes a polynomial, this, the degree uh, raises, right? And, and the degree is multiplied by 2k. So I have a 2k which pops out there. And here I should take the power 2k of, um, of the null two of the power two k, which I could actually um, rewrite as follows if I didn't make uh, a mistake: two times two k and the power two k here. So this is what um, this is what we get. Um, and now, if I take, um, I have this inequality here. And now, if I take um, the square root, the, the two k, two k square root of um, of the above, what I get. Since here I have an operator number, this is multiplicative, and I obtain that, that the quantity. Let me just just try once more. Cheat. 
they obtain that uh, this thing here, um, mm -hmm, that this thing here is less than, than uh, 2k's root of p uh, 2kl. And here, well, I could just bound this by the L infinity norm of the, of the limit, sum of alpha w, w with the L infinity norm. And you see it's basically this quantity here, because it's polynomial, if k is, this is true for, for, all, for all k, basically. So, this, uh, so this, this can be as close as I want uh, uh, to 1. So this distance to 1 as k goes to infinity. So what I managed to prove that way is that for for every epsilon, the, the limit sup of this of this quantity is less than one plus epsilon than this quantity. And this is true for all epsilon. So I can achieve strong under that way. This is a very um, uh, a very nice uh, trick, I think. Uh, of course, I think it it would be possible. It should be possible to to do the same with with matrices, I'm always hoping for, for a matrix-valued uh, Hagop inequality. Um, we don't have it yet, but anyway, so I'm, I'm over time, so I will I will stop here and and continue um, uh, tomorrow, I guess. So uh, on the right-hand side of that original inequality, the word is evaluated in the, the limit in the semicircle distribution, not in the generators of the pre orthogonal quantum group. Uh, yeah, I think this is probably, yeah, probably I am, uh, probably uh, this, this should be in the quantum group originally. I'm, I think what I'm stating is, is still correct <laughs> here, but, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, um, there might be one step which I which I skipped indeed. Yeah. Yes. So the high bin model, Jamie here. Um, so is K going to infinity in that? Is that the idea? You let K go to infinity? That object to to pick off the highest value value. Is that what you mean? So, sorry, uh, it's very hard to hear you. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, the question was, you just start... are you letting K go to infinity to, to peak off the norm? Is that? The yeah, right, 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 right. So, exactly, yeah. You see, uh, I mean, a thing that to often you often see is that you, you get the larger, you get the largest eigenvalue by taking moments but you let this mm -hmm. moment that you take grow slower than the size of the matrix, but larger than the size of the log of the size of the matrix. Oh yeah. Right? yeah. It's a very common technique. Yeah, yeah. Is there right. Some... Yeah, yeah. So, so here it's, a, so here it's, a, it's different actually. We, we don't have to actually, uh, the, the algebra that Mike is considering is not fine dimensional, so so you you, you cannot you know uh, use this uh, this Furedi Kolmosh uh, type of arguments where where you take a, a degree which grows together with dimension at least bigger than the logarithm of this. This that doesn't that doesn't work here. So so it's it, it's just that that he has somehow what what I find uh, uh, interesting here is is that he has an a priori estimate on the operator norm. Which seems to be suboptimal somehow. You know, it's uh, it just tells something. It just compares with. Um, it's an inequality anyway. Uh, it's an inequality, but but somehow the fact that uh, that you are able to that you have a, a polynomial control and not exponential or something else um, uh, allows you to to actually say that this inequality is actually enough to obtain conversion. Yeah, that's kind of um, um, yeah. That's. Uh, a little bit surprising, but hmm. oh, oh, that's a